Hi everyone and welcome to the full comparisons between React Native and Flutter. So this probably will be the last comparison video you will ever watch during your career to pretty much put your mind whether you go with Flutter or you just keep going or you pretty much you go with React Native. So if you're a beginner or you're just getting started with mobile development, you're probably just gonna have this question and it's actually a really huge question to ask yourself about. What should I choose, Flutter or React Native? It's, it's pretty huge pretty much to figure out what framework to go with because it's just gonna determine what job you're gonna land later on or what libraries you're gonna be working on or different application paradigms you are pretty much gonna go through. So in this video, we're gonna just go all through the aspects and side of just determining what framework is best for you depending on your expertise or what you wanna do and what jobs you wanna land. So let's start by defining or knowing exactly what React Native is and what is Flutter. So React Native is a mobile framework created by Facebook in 2015. And it has been out for a couple of years and a lot of applications has been created by using this beloved framework from a lot of developers around the globe, including me, of course, but it has some downsides and upsides, so as all frameworks. It allows creating mobile applications from a single source for both Android and iOS. While on the other hand, Flutter is a mobile development kit created by Google and has been released like the 1.1 version in the last year. It's aiming to bring up development to the next level and it cares a lot about developer experience and it brought a brand new changes to the mobile development world and it uses dark programming language under the hood. So now let's jump and see the major differences between both of these frameworks and see which one is perfect for you. So for the developer API, React has an easy learning curve, especially for JavaScript developers. So if you are actually a previous like web developer or current web developer who knows JavaScript and master it and knows all the basics and stuff about it, React Native is gonna be super, super easy to get started. Just pick it up and get started with it. You're just not gonna feel any differences between web development and mobile development, just in a couple of like minimal differences. And since JavaScript is pretty common among a lot of developers, it's like according to the 2020 Stack Overflow surveys, JavaScript is the most wanted and pretty much works with our programming language in 2018. So yeah, you guessed it, right? It is JavaScript and it makes it such easy to understand and work with React Native. It also has a pretty robust state management techniques and APIs to pretty much keep the state really tight and you can just have control over of your application states in one single place. The only bad thing about React from a developer's API perspective is actually the setup and getting started with it. So if you wanna set up your first project and install it and everything, you're gonna have like a tough time doing this because it has a lot of complicated steps to go through and for a beginner, it might be a little bit tough to just pick it up and get started with. So this is only the downside I found from a developer API perspective to actually for React Native and just pick it up and get started working with it. For Flutter, it has a very easy getting started guide and documentation just guides you through the instructions you need to do. And on the other hand, it has a smooth project setup experience. So if you wanna just get, create a new project using Flutter, it has like the Flutter CLI does the job for you under the hood. It's just like, do Flutter, create a project, and just boom, everything is set up, and you can just get started with Flutter. That simple it is. It is much better it, depending on the React Native on when you just try to create a new project and set it up. But when it comes to the installation of a Flutter and the whole development kits and set up all the path and stuff, it is quite painful because you have to just go through the binaries for your own platform, you download it, and you just like go all throughout the steps to configure the binaries and install it and add it to your path. So you can pretty much can have control over the whole environment. And that's a little bit painful for a newbie developers who are just getting started. Also, since Flutter uses Dart under the hood as a programming language, so yeah, a lot of developers gonna have difficulties learning Dart because you know it's less known compared to JavaScript and not a lot of people are fan of Dart and its own uh, syntax and just like reactive programming uh, paradigms and stuff like that. So yeah, you're gonna have a tough time learning Dart, but if you wanna just go with it, yeah, you should go with it, there's no going back. 
For UI components, React has a very few built-in components compared to Frello. So if you want just to get started with and create a very basic project from scratch using React, so you're not gonna have a lot of choices to choose components from like text components and you have full customization and stuff like that. But in the other side and the brightest side of all the things here, it has a huge third party libraries. So if you just go get up and just type in React Native, you're gonna find a lot of UI components, uh, libraries for the React Native framework, of course, from different side, from material to dark, to light theme and different stuff you can pretty much use. And that what makes it really special compared to Flutter. And for Flutter in the other side, it has actually less third party components published there because it's a new framework out there. So there isn't many libraries compared to React, but the greatest part about here is actually the built-in components from Google's standard library are huge. So they are customizable. There is pretty much everything you need to go ahead and get started and create a basic project, even intermediate and advanced project, you can just all do it in one place using the standard and the basic components, including throughout the standard library, which makes it super easy. And once I did actually get started and started working with Flutter, uh, the last time is pretty much made it super easy. They include a lot of components, a lot of widgets, and yeah, it made my day. For performance, React has an acceptable performance overall. But when it comes to larger and bigger applications that uses more RAM and more CPU, well, React is gonna just like have a lower performance compared to Flutter because it all goes through the JavaScript bridge. And that can make it a little bit slower compared to a native code running on an, the native CPU, of course. So that is only the downside when it comes to performance. But if you just like running regular applications and small applications to mid applications, you pretty much not gonna be noticing that. For larger and more complicated and complex applications, you would probably just need more optimization, going through your code to, to optimize everything that goes as smooth as possible. For Flutter, it has a better performance overall compared to the React Native because it all goes down into the code gets natively compiled and it runs natively on the device's chipset. And that gonna make like a huge difference between React and the Flutter code running all of that. Comparing the JavaScript bridge to a native code, well, you're gonna pretty much notice some difference when it comes to performance. So Flutter has a win-win that's on the performance side in here, but React still have some you know, on our other sides that goes throughout well. Also Flutter can actually replace heavy application development and go into native or pretty much replace native application developments because you can pretty much do heavy tasks like game development or creating games and overall can create AI application or heavy AI application or image processing application and stuff like that. So yeah, you still can do something like this using Flutter, but when it comes all down into regular application like Facebooks and just like chat applications and stuff like that, doesn't use heavily CPU and chipsets and just heavily used RAM and stuff like that, well, you're not gonna be noticing a much difference between the performance here and there. For community and documentation, React has a pretty well explained documentation with a lot of languages available from Chinese to Japanese and stuff like that. And of course it has a lot of support out there so you can pretty much just go through and ask for React and boom, you can have find help here and there. And yeah, you can just find a lot of React Native help uh, from one side and as well, the documentation is pretty well written. And when it comes to pretty much like third party libraries and the whole community overall and how much helpful the community can be, well, of course, as you all know, React Native has a huge community from going from actually to tutorials to courses and free courses and paid courses and of course forums that you can ask different couple of questions on and pretty much gonna get immediately like answers about which can be very helpful as a beginner and just can get it started with React Native if just like get stuck somewhere you have just like a pretty robust and ridiculous issue or error going on there well you pretty much can find help here and there and yeah it could be very very useful as a beginner and that is actually a good point about React Native as we can find there because community is always a good thing to have in anything you wanna just learn and get started. For Flutter's documentation, yes, Google did a 
great job on that part in particular and yeah it has written a self-explanatory documentation straight to the point with great and clear instructions and the examples are absolutely amazing so you just like pick up an example and like 90 percent i say you would understand from that example because it's well documented and the instructions are self-explanatory so yeah the documentation is super nice over there from the photo side but the bad point about this is actually the community as we all know it has been like a couple of years and just like a year or two since flutter came out and officially getting into the production uh, based vision so there isn't that much of tutorials going out there about flutter or just like libraries I still as i'm saying on the youtube community stuff they are daily uh, growing about Flutter, so yeah, you're gonna find daily stories about that and stuff like this. They are pretty interesting, but still, compared to React Native, you're gonna see a huge difference from React Native side, just like blowing out on the community side, of course. So if you're probably wondering what apps or companies are actually using either React Native or Flutter, so when it comes to React Native, there's many companies and many well-known applications are built around this great framework. So you can see since it's created by Facebook, well, Facebook has built most of its products around React Native, like the Facebook, uh, pretty much the Messenger, the Instagram application, a whole being built up from scratch using React Native framework. There's as well Airbnb, who doesn't know Airbnb? Yeah, it's this great smooth UI has been built of course, using React Native. And on the other side, you're gonna find a lot of different examples, just like go ahead and Google what apps are just built using React Native, you're gonna find a plethora of them. But for Flutter, there isn't much of companies has been adopting Flutter since it has been released because there's just like a couple of months or just a year has been gone into production ready things. So yeah, you're not gonna be finding a lot of applications, but still many, applications or many companies are shifting to using Flutter since its performance and stuff, including Google has its Google Ads Manager, uh, the New York Times application, even the Alibaba or Alibaba site, yeah, it's like the application of Alibaba has been rebuilt from scratch to be based on Flutter. And that's pretty flattering to be honest when it comes to Flutter. So yeah, hopefully we will see more applications and more big giant tech companies gets relying into uh, Flutter and puts their just like whole teams working on Flutter as well as they did with React Native. But yeah, so there's actually guys about the comparisons and my final opinion when I'm gonna be saying this. So yeah, if you just like made it this far on the video and you're probably just wanting to know the final decision. So either you go with React Native or you go with Flutter. Now it pretty much all depends and it's up to you and it depends on what you want to do. So if you want to be uh, pretty much a mobile developer, you wanna go for heavy applications, you care about performance a lot and you don't care about third party libraries because you can use the built-in things and stuff, uh, like UIs and stuff from here, just to make that happen, well, as uh, my opinion in here would go with Flutter and you can just go in and search Flutter because it's much better and it's performance oriented and you don't care about third party libraries or stuff like that or community or support. But in the other hand, if you are a web developer and you've used React before, even though if you didn't use React at all, you probably have like a decent amount of knowledge about JavaScript since you're a web developer and you wanna go with applications and you wanna just explore a lot of opportunities there about different libraries, different UI component libraries from different teams around the world and different people just putting creative UI components there on GitHub's. Well, yeah, React Native is your choice and you can go with this if you, either if you're actually pretty much a beginner and wants to get started, you're gonna find a lot of developers and tutorials and community uh, helping you throughout this. And in your hand, you're gonna find and build really great and beautiful applications if you're using the React Native, as well as you're not gonna be changing a lot of context going from, for example, if you're a web developer, as I said before, so you're gonna have the same context going through, so you have JavaScript both on mobile and web, and you're gonna, not gonna be finding any difficulties changing back and forth between those uh, fields. But when it comes to Flutter, if you're just like web developer and wanna go for mobile, yeah, you got the point. You change it from JavaScript to Dart is a quite hectic when it comes to the syntax and all the different stuff. But yeah, that was just like my opinion. I'm not gonna be saying you need to go for Flutter for 
definitely forever for the end of the world, whatever, or you need to go for React Native. I'm not just saying that, it all depends on what you need um, and want to build with each framework. Each framework has its own downsides and has its great um, like things going on about it, but yeah, it all depends on what you want to set before. So that actually was my opinion, if you want to do, and yeah, that's actually the end of the video. So thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys have enjoyed the videos. If you want more videos like this, like compare videos like this, or stuff like kind of sit down and just uh, film myself video talking to the camera, yeah, I'll be very happy to make more videos, guys, for you. So anyways, guys, thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys have enjoyed the video tutorial as always. And without further ado, without further saying, make sure to subscribe, push the like button if you like the video, and see you guys, hopefully, in the next video.